Okay, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome. Uh, Philip will be leading us this morning. Uh, we're still trying to get our speaker on, but we'll figure something out. And uh, yeah, so over to you, Philip. Thanks. Good morning, and welcome as we have a time of worship today. I hope you are all, all doing well. Let's begin with a call to prayer from Psalm 66, verses 8 and 9. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip? A greeting from Psalms 123, verses 1 and 2. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of the servant look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy upon us. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our eyes that we open, Lord, our eyes that we may see. Open, Lord, our ears that we may hear. Open, Lord, our hearts and minds that we may understand. So shall we turn to you and be healed. A New Testament reading, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the first 11 verses. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them. As labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you beloved are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For your, you and all your children of light and children of the day, we are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and for those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation, through Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. A hymn. See the conqueror mounts in triumph. See the king in royal state riding on the clouds his chariot to his heavenly place, palace gate. Hark, the choirs of angel voices, joyful alleluias sing, and the portals high are lifted to receive their heavenly king. He who on the cross did suffer, he who from the grave arose, he has vanquished sin and Satan, he by death has spoiled his foes. While he lifts his hands in blessing, he is parted from his friends. While their eager eyes behold him, he upon the clouds ascends. You have raised our human nature on the clouds to God's right hand. There we sit in heavenly places. There with you in glory stand. Jesus reigns, adored by angels. Man with God is on his throne. Mighty Lord, in your ascension, we by faith behold our own. An Old Testament reading, Psalms 107, verses 23 to 32. Some went down to the sea in ships doing business on the mighty waters. They saw the deeds of the Lord and his wondrous works in the deep. For he commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves of the sea. 
They mounted up to heaven, they went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their calamity. They reeled and staggered like drunkards, and they were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he brought them out of, from their distress. He made the storm be still, and the waves of the seas were hushed. Then they were glad because they had quiet, and he had brought them to their desired haven. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to humankind. Let them extol him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the assembly of the elders. And uh, now our message from uh, Eric Finney. Okay. Yep. Can you hear me okay, Kevin? Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much for the invitation. Sorry it took me a while to get on. I, I had a an old uh, computer that was on the boat, and I just brought it into our clubhouse here to fire it up. Thought it would work real good. It took actually a half an hour to get all booted up. But to to the text, Psalm 107, just that first verse there that was just read, uh, others went out to the sea in ships. They were merchants on the high waters. And I just want to sit with that thought, that text, uh, for a few minutes. Um, I'll just give you sort of three very quick stories and then a, a little bit of application for us uh, who are chaplains and who work with seafarers directly. Uh, for as long as I can remember, when I drove across the Harbor Bridge in St. John, New Brunswick, where I live, um, I would look out through the harbor and you could see the entire harbor, all the main piers, uh, the, the terminals, uh, and on as far as Partridge Island, which was our own version of Ellis Island, it was where so many uh, Irish immigrants made landfall and were quarantined there for, uh, for, for months at a time. And every time I crossed that bridge, as I said, as far as I can remember, uh, I would have a, a sort of a pang of excitement and a little bit of fear, uh, a little bit of uh, just this this sense, this feeling, and and what it was was the the call of the sea. And I've always been uh, interested in in uh, in the sea, seafaring, uh, the port of St. John, uh, and uh, have my own boat. I've I've sailed my boat to the Bahamas and back. Uh, but every time I would cross that bridge, I would just feel that draw of the sea. And um, Second story is, is uh, I had a couple of seafarers out. This was oh, two or three years ago. And I thought I'd give them kind of the quintessential Canadian experience. I took them to the Tim Hortons. We sat down, we had our, our coffee and donuts, and I, I decided just to do a little interview. And one of them had only been at sea for a couple of years, fairly new. The other fellow had been at sea for 30 years. And I just asked them, why do you do what you do? And uh, the older, fellow didn't say too much. He, he kind of saw it as a job and was looking forward to, you know, getting home on dry land. But the, but the younger man said something that I'll always remember. And he said in, in sort of the most idyllic tone, you know, there's some countries that have some things and uh, some, uh, some goods, and there's other countries that don't have them and they really need them. And I am the bridge. I, I take those things from one place to another. And the way he spoke that, it was like, it, it was like there was a, a call of God on his life and that he could do nothing else. Others went down to the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. And my third story is about my friend, Paul. Paul is a local fisherman here. He was in my parish for, I, I was there for about eight years. And uh, he told me his story one time. And uh, his father was a fisherman and his father, father's father was a fisherman and they all gave their sons the same advice. And they said, don't go fishing, son. Don't go fishing, it's a hard life. Do something else. And so Paul, uh, obedient to his father's advice, uh, went off and he joined the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and where he served for two years. And then he went, went, went back fishing with his father. And his father said again, don't, don't go fishing, son. Do something else. 
And so Paul went out and he bought himself a dump truck and he was a, he was a little, a contractor, a, um, moved, moved dirt around, ran a backhoe for a couple of years. And then he went back fishing with his father. And uh, he finally uh, gave in and uh, yielded to the call of the sea and he fished for the rest of his life until his son was old enough and he told his son, don't go fishing, son. And while now his son Jeremy owns a brand new boat and uh, he's also one of the skippers of our local pilot boat, but you know, he can't do anything else. And I say this because the call to the sea is a godly call. Uh, it's, you know, echoed in the John Mansfield poem, of course I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea and sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And uh, I really believe that people who uh, work on the sea, for the most part, have heard and answered that call. Uh, they are blessed. <coughs> they're blessed because of obedience in doing what they're called to do. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And, and we see that in them. We, we benefit from them so much. But of course, you know, uh, they are humans. They are tempted. They face temptation. Temptation through fear and greed and lust and all, all the normal things, they are tempted. And they are to be honored. They're honorable for responding to this call in their life and lastly, they are to be cared for. And of course, as chaplains, as people that work with them, we're aware very much that these are men and some women who are called, they are blessed, they're tempted like everyone else, but they are to be honored. And it's our calling to care for them. Let us just bow our heads and I'll say a short prayer for seafarers, for all who go down to the sea in ships. Father in heaven, we ask you to consider these that we work with, these that we care for, these who we, whom we bless, these who we sometimes stand in the gap for. Lord, we pray that this day they would know your love and your kindness through the work of, of uh, Seafarer Welfare Ministries around the world. Lord, bless seafarers today and make sure their call uh, is from you. Father, speak to their hearts and encourage them this day. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Eternal Father who rules over wind and wave, Look with favor, we beseech thee, upon the men and women of the Merchant Marine. Preserve them from the perils of storm and fog, of hidden reef and lurking enemy. Be strong to save them in the hour of disaster and bring them safe at last unto their desired haven. Bless, we pray thee, all their loved ones. Provide for the needy, heal the sick, strengthen the tempted, console the lonely, Encourage the anxious and comfort the sorrowful, that in the sweet hours of reunion, no shadows may dim the brightness of their joy. Loving God, pour out your spirit on all people living with illness, especially Damak, Bondak, and the crew stricken with COVID-19 on board the USNS Leroy Kwanman. Restore them to the assurance of your unfailing mercy. Remove their fears. Strengthen those who are engaged in the work of their recovery comfort their families and friends. Guide and direct all who control the conditions under which they labor at sea. Enlighten and uphold all who minister to their needs ashore. Give to those who commit their possessions and their lives and to their keeping a full realization of the fidelity with which the stewardship is discharged. Remember in glory the shipyard port engineer in Boston who passed this past week and keep your servant Kate and all who care for our seafarers there in the palm of your assuring hand. We lift up to you in grief the memory of the Reverend Canon Ken Peters and gratitude for his work for seafarers, the mission to seafarers, for NAMA and IPMA, 
be also with our colleague Ray Hanna at Lighthouse Harbor Ministries, grieving the loss of his mother and so many others of us who have lost friends and loved ones. Be a comfort to us in life and look face to face on our brothers and sisters in death. These things we ask in the name of him whose word even the winds and the waters obey, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord's Prayer will recite together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we end our worship time today, let's pray together. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of all of you, us, your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Also a benediction, a blessing. Now may the God of peace who brought you back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We want to wish every one of you a good week. We pray that you stay, stay safe and healthy. And we encourage you to join us here again next week at the same time. So until then, God bless.